Our next comic is our second skinny dick of the night. And uh, he's a friend of a lot of people here. He performs all around town, and he's going to be performing at Red Rock next Thursday. Yeah. Red Rock is in town. Make sure you check that out. People, applaud very loudly for Rob Lindo. Yeah. That introduction was just loud. How's everyone doing? Good to see you all. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Suna, and all the other comics we've had so far. I like to move this so it's just right, so then I can just take the mic out of there anyway, and then move it right out of the way. So, um, let me see. Lost. What the fuck? I'm gonna bring it up. Are you clapping? Because you like that shit? See, what a tough night. I didn't think of this. The Lakers, who knew? I didn't even think they'd make it this far in the playoffs. Come on, those guys suck. Uh, but that was a bit of a problem. And then this whole Lost thing, like, I didn't realize people still watched it. Everyone's whining, like, oh my god, your night is on the same night as Lost. We, we can't possibly make it. Yeah, that's what a DVR is for. It does a little thing, like, let you watch TV and keep a social life. Uh, just, just, a, just a heads up. Plus, how appropriately named is that show? Lost. It's audience, I thought. <laughs> Lost. The people who are watching it. Why didn't they just name the show what it really is? What the fuck is going on? I don't know. I have no idea, mind you. I'm talking from a point of ignorance, as I often am, because I've never fucking seen it. <laughs> I really tried to watch that first episode. There was a plane crash. I was like, yeah, I already saw that movie. It had Tom Hanks in it. Great. <laughs> Packages. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> One day, I was actually at a hockey game, and I was like heckling this guy, or heckling the team, whatever. And I guess this asshole thought he was a big fan. So he's like, oh, what are you, Hurley? And it came up because I'm fat and I have curly hair. Yeah, fuck you. But here's the best part. This guy was wearing a shirt that said, I beat anorexia. This guy was way bigger than I was. I'm like, no, why don't I just shave my head, turn into a wig, and put it on you and your Hurley, bitch. So that that's how that went down. Anyway, that's, that's, that's just some shit about Lost. Thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Rob Lindo. If you didn't know this about me already, I am of mixed race. I'm, uh, mom's white, dad's black, and according to my hair, I'm a Jew. <laughs> what is up? Well, what happened there? I came out pretty white. Like, I look at myself in the mirror, my, my lips are so thin, I'm like, fuck, I must be white. I, I, try to, I try to puff them out, I'm like, there's like lip gloss you can get which puffs your lip. Nothing. I need to get some sort of in injections and fat collagen. I don't know what they put in there. But normally black is the dominant gene, so it's like a little weird that I did come out so light skinned. And I just keep imagining like how many arguments there must have been between my dad. And he'd be like, oh, well, look at that boy. The boy's white. White as hell. He can't be my kid. It must, it must have been the mailman. But the other thing you might not know about me is I was born in Jamaica, so the mailman was black too. He'd be like, come on, what me, man? I don't know what to do with this lady here, you know. So, and we always say, it's my dad was like, well, that makes sense. Plus, the mail never comes. <laughs> this is Jamaica. This place sucks dick. There's only one TV channel in Jamaica when I was a kid. Uh, JBC, the Jamaica Broadcast Corporation. And here's what it, here's what it showed about, uh, it had about four hours of programming a day. And the rest of the day was... <laughs> White noise. And they show four shows. Dynasty, Falcon Crest, Knight Rider, and the News. Like, that was it. So that was my whole childhood growing up. It was like, da -da 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 -da. I wanted that car. I wanted to like stab someone in the neck in a very fancy house. Uh, and then the news would come on and be like, uh, welcome to the Jamaica Broadcast News Corporation. Tonight we're having nice weather. Are the weather sunny? <laughs> Tomorrow they when I gonna look sunny. We have nothing else to see, so shut up. This is just on again. <laughs> that was all that was going down, man. My dad had to steal a satellite, and and like and I don't know why he needed a satellite. I swear to God, this thing was like 28 feet wide and like military green. It was in like our backyard. It was like hidden. I was like, what? And what are you doing? Why do you need such a big satellite? It's just like anywhere else in the world. And then he, I was like, well, I'm stealing it. What if there's like an airplane flyover and they're looking for a satellite dish? It's like some military shit. They never go see it. I'm like, okay, okay, cool. Where's, where's the spice channel? Just tell me where the porn's at. 
So, um, another thing about my dad that you might not know, because you don't know him, is that he was a germphobe uh, and OCD. Now, those people are really annoying. They're always washing their hands. Come on, you know there's one of you in here, you fucking annoying bastard with your Purell and shit. Um, they're always washing their hands. Like, there's this sign in the bathroom that says, it must wash your hands. Like, we know we're supposed to wash our hands, and we don't need you, you germphobic law writer, to tell us that shit. But there are other benefits to knowing someone who's extremely germphobic, and I'll tell you what they are. One day I went in my dad's bag, and I'm like, hey, hey, what's up, dad? He's like, oh, uh, what's up with you? And I'm like, why is there a bag of bags in your bag? He's like, like literally a bag full of plastic bags, like not lunch sandwich bags, but just, just these big bags. He's like, well, you see the thing about these bags is when I drop something and it becomes contaminated, I put it in the bag and then I take it home and if I can disinfect it and put it back in a condition where I can use it again, I'll use it again. And I'm like, oh, that's so weird. Like even as a kid, I was like, you're a freak. And I'm like, well, what if you can't can, uh, you know, clean it up? He's like, well then I'll just throw it away. I was like, so you throw away anything that touches the ground that you can't clean? Yeah. So like this book, oh, oh, I, I love this book. So I started taking anything I could. This was my method. I just drop shit. Oh, can I keep that? Great. There was days when he would come home and like everything in the house would be on the ground. And I'd be like, hey, I'm just going to take all this stuff if you don't mind. I've tried to use that throughout life. Because what that really taught me was how to manipulate people. These are the lessons you learn as a young child. You can use that manipulation later in life to like, get sex, or take people's jobs, any of the above. Um, so, <laughs> not that I've done that, I've never done that. I never had a girlfriend who came home with everything on their house in the ground. She's like, I'm not even germ-phobic, what are you doing? For breaking up. Um, so I moved out here to do acting, and the problem is, is that I, I have like this look where it's like a little bit Jonah Hill. People were like, oh my god, you came out of here at like the perfect time. You look like Jonah Hill. And then other people were like, no, you look like, you know, Seth Rogen. You're, you're perfect. You're like Seth Rogen and Jonah Hill fucked each other and had a baby. Perfect timing for you. And then Seth Rogen, that asshole, lost all that weight. And Jonah Hill like shaved his hair. So he, the, I, I lost all my edge. So I was like, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to kidnap Jonah Hill. I'm going to take that motherfucker out. Just show up at his auditions. But it turned out he's quite wily. I've had people on the case for ages. I can't even find this kid. You wouldn't think he'd be that fast, but he's quite fast. I think he must be on to me. So then I'm like, fuck it. Well, what? I'll, I'll just take all. I'll just redo all his movies with a Jamaican accent. I'm the Jamaican Jonah Hill. So it'd be like, it'd be like instead of the 40 year old virgin, it'd be like, yo man, they want to buy these shoes here. You know, these shoes with the gold fish in them. Shaba. Or, or then uh, super bad. Joe man, you know the girls always say, man, we should have stepped to that guy. We could be the dark mystique. <laughs> and then I'm like, man, we can remake anything. We can remake Goodfellas. And as long as I can remember, man, we always wanted to be a gangster. <laughs> I tried to pitch the idea. I failed completely. Uh, anyway, fuck it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to figure something out. Uh, anyone here from Oakland? Oaktown. No! San Francisco? Yeah! Yeah! There we go. I, I wanted to tell you something. I was up in Oakland recently, and they had something there called the Super CVS. Have you ever heard of a Super CVS? No? Okay. It's like a Home Depot date raped a fucking CVS. It's like, ah, and then just passed out on top. And that was it. I mean, I'm talking the biggest, most amazing store you've ever seen. Just, ah, done. And like, you walk in there and there's like lumber and prescriptions and fucking wood growing and plants and trees. It's like, they have things that are like a melanin or a degree. I didn't even know what this is. You can make your own clothes. I'm telling you, you could be born in a super CVS and never leave it. Plants for oxygen. You can even grow up with this whole thing. Anyway, this, this really isn't even a joke. I just wanted to tell you what awesome super CVS is. And, and God bless them for doing that kind of shit. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Mike, for that, that lone clap. Uh, what about Idaho? Anyone here from Idaho? Oh, man. Tough crowd. L.A. All you people. Idaho! Idaho! Our, <laughs> I was driving down the street the other day, and I saw a car with an Idaho license plate, and it said, Scenic Idaho. And I'm like, what? That's like two lies 
in one. Because the next thing it says after that is famous potatoes. And if anyone's ever been to Idaho, it's not really that scenic. And famous potatoes, like, what famous potatoes? The only famous potato is Mr. Potato Head, okay? And that motherfucker is guaranteed from Hollywood. Have you seen all the costumes? There's no way he's from Idaho. So, anyone who's from Idaho is not here. Fuck you, that's all I have to say. Anyway, that's my time. I'm Rob Lindo. Thanks for coming down. Rob Lindo, everybody. Holy crap.